Today we're going over the louver motor operation and testing on a mini split unit. Make sure to check out our new book on inverter mini splits and we go over the electrical operation of all the components inside. We go over the refrigerant related practices and a lot of the questions that you may have concerning these systems. So check this out in the full outline over at acservicetech.com in the mini split tab. Louver motors are typically 12 volt direct current powered and so these are stepper motors that have a little gearing inside to slow down the movement of the louvers as we are supplying 12 volt pulses. Now over here, you see a, a manual setup in order to, to teach how the louver motor works, but this is typically plugged into the indoor unit PCB. So that's the indoor unit printed circuit board via this plug. And so we just cut this plug off in order to show you how it works. And so we're using a battery bank of eight batteries in series. And so these are 1.5 volt batteries. So eight times 1.5 volts and you equal 12 volts. And that's the same power that's needed for this louver motor. In fact, it's actually a little bit higher than 12 volts because each one of these batteries are 1.65 volts. Now each one of these four wires are connected through a coil via to this common wire. And so louver motors are typically five wire. And so one is the common and each one of these other wires represents one coil being powered. So you got four coils. There's actually two on the top and then two towards the lower section right here. And you are providing magnetic uh, pulses in order to, to turn this. That's what's happening. And I'll get into that in a little bit. And this probe here is connected to the negative side of these batteries and the positive side is connected to this common connection point to the motor. And so if I touch right here, I'm supplying a 12 volt pulse to this louver motor. And so if I just continue doing this, I'll be supplying a 12 volt pulse to each of these coils on the inside. And so what you wanna do is you wanna watch the movement of the louvers. So it's slowly, slowly closing. And so I can just go like this and do it faster. But essentially that's the power pulses that are being supplied from the indoor unit PCB to the louver motor in order to shut them, or it would be in the opposite sequence in order to open the louvers. So it's just like that. So if we were to do this, say out of sequence, basically just keep going back and forth. Yeah, you really need to have the right sequence in order for this to turn. And there is gearing inside as well, and that slows down the movement of the motor. Otherwise, the, the louver blades would, would jump as they're opening. And so now I wanna show you the inside of this louver motor. So as you can see, this one right here, that's actually supposed to turn the outer gearing, which is right here, it's just barely moving. So you can see the motor spinning pretty quickly, but you barely see this gear even turning. So, so that's how it's able to slow it down. Now let's take a look on the inside of here. So here you have your top piece and here's your inner gear. You have your other gears that are sitting right on top of these rods. And so this assembly was sitting right on top of this. And so you have your permanent magnet riding right on this axle right here on top of this little uh, spring right here on the bottom. And so basically what you have here is this is what I wanna focus on. And so you see that you have teeth on the inside. And so you have four sets of teeth. You have a top set, a bottom set for this two coils on the top, and then you have a top set of teeth here and a bottom set of teeth for these two sets of coils right here. And so if you were to look right here, these three tabs align to two coils. And so you have your common in the middle. And so right up here, you have the same thing. And so you have two coils here, two coils here. And so what I want to get you to to know is that the amount of teeth, so which is six, is the same as the amount of north or south poles that are on here. And so if we take a magnet, and so you can see we already have a etched part right there of the magnet. So let's just start there. So we're right on it right now. And so if we go one, two, three, four, five, 
six, and then we'll go seven. So you see there's actually uh, six different poles here. And so there's a north and a south and a north and a south all the way around the perimeter. So north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. And what happens here is the north get attracted to the magnetic field that is north when it's applied onto this metal. So how a copper coil works is that every time that you supply 12 volt power to a coil, it turns into an electrical magnet. And then you have these teeth. So the teeth on the top may be north and the teeth on the bottom of this coil right here is south. And then you power the next coil and this set is north and this set is south. You know, this set that was right in here. Then you power the next set and the next set is, instead of this being north, it's south up here, so it's reverse. And then this is north. And then you power the last coil, and this is south, and this is north. And the object is that no set of teeth is right in the same spot. So I'm going to put this back in here. So if you look down inside of here, you don't see that any one of these teeth is in the same position as one of the other ones. They're all slightly offset from each other. So it's almost like creating a rotating magnetic field as you apply 12 volts to each one of these four coils because you're going to have your north moving like this, boom, 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 boom. And so this magnet is going to be spinning and turning each time that you power a different coil. So a better way to see it is with these two coils here and you have your top set of teeth on your iron casing and then you have your, your bottom casing teeth. And you can see that each louver motor has a different set of teeth and therefore the permanent magnet here will have a different set of north and south poles on it it's made for the specific louver motor you know design so when you power one set of coils here you're going to have say north on the top and south on the bottom because that's what happens when you power a coil it generates a magnetic field and so the north and the top basically applies the north pole so the north magnetism onto these teeth in the center, and this would have the south over here on these teeth on the bottom. Another thing to note is that you don't wanna leave power on to a louver motor on one, say like the, the red and one of the coils, because potentially it's gonna burn out if you leave this uh, magnet out of it, uh, but really it's just getting a quick little 12 volt pulse that's gonna happen so quickly that your multimeter may not even be able to measure it and pick it up because it's jumping 12 volts to each one of these four wires in sequence very, very rapidly. Now what I want to do is I want to go over and test the electrical resistance of these coils with a multimeter to make sure that the louver motor is intact. So here we have two louver motors. One is good and one is bad. And we're measuring electrical resistance with our multimeter in ohms. And so let's just measure this top one first. So you're going to have to look in the wiring diagrams of the manufacturer in order to tell which one of these is common. But uh, you could also just take your electrical resistance measurements and determine that yourself. And so typically the red is the common, but you can, once again, you'll be able to figure this out with the electrical resistance measurements. And so from red to orange, we're measuring 243 ohms. From red to yellow, we're measuring 265. From red to pink, we're measuring 240. And from red to blue... 245 ohms. So they're going to be very similar. Uh, they may be slightly different due to the, the wire wraps and the wiring connecting and coming over to that common. Uh, but this one is intact. And so it is still good. And so if we were to measure just between these two, say the blue and the pink, you're going to see that our electrical resistance measurement doubles. So you see 485 ohms. So same thing between any of these. So 491, 488. So what the whole point of this is, it's doubling the two coils that you're measuring the electrical resistance from. It's using the common to connect the two coils, and that's why you have basically double the electrical resistance. But in this, we have not measured OL. And OL would mean open line. That means that it's, it's broken inside. And so this one's good. And you can see that when you have one probe and you are measuring the same electrical resistance across all the other four uh, coil wires, that's when you know that the one that you are keeping in place is the common one. And in this case, that one is red. All right, so let's do the same thing. This is the exact same louver motor, same brand, same everything. 
Uh, and now we'll go ahead and measure between red and orange. And right there you see we're measuring OL. So we got red to yellow, OL. Red to pink, OL. Red to blue. We actually do have our electrical resistance measurements. And so if we were to even measure between the coils, you know, blue to pink, we've got OL. Blue to yellow, OL. Blue to orange, OL. So we have three coils that are burnt, basically burnt apart. We only have one that's good. Now, some of these louver motors may have two or three of the coils intact. And what will happen is when you see the louver motors opening or closing, you'll see more of a jumping effect. It's not going to be very noticeable, but it it is noticeable, and that louver motor is potentially on its way out. It's getting overheated, maybe due to the, the friction or something like that uh, when it's trying to turn, and so that could be an issue. The other thing is you, you always want to turn the power off uh, to the, the mini split if you suspect a louver motor problem, and just see if you can slowly adjust the louvers yourself manually, just slowly. You want to see that if they're stuck or if there's some type of issue. But they will feel a little tight, and that's the whole point is because you have the gearing inside. You don't want to be turning this real quickly or, or trying to, to apply too much force or anything like that because you have those tiny little plastic gears on the inside. So I just wanted you to know how these louver motors worked and how to troubleshoot them. And if you want to learn more about the electrical troubleshooting and operation of the components in a mini split system, make sure to check out our Inverter Mini Split Operation Service Procedures book. That book is available over at our website at acservicetech.com, over on Amazon through amazon.com slash shop slash acservicetech. And it's also available as an ebook over on Google Play and Apple Books. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.